Hi, this is Mr. Lee, and I'm here to read you a story that's going to get you all ready for kindergarten. I know many of you may be feeling nervous about coming to school all day and just being in school for the first time and missing your families. But have you ever thought about what it's like for your pets to have you leave them all day? And if they worry about you and what happens? Well, I have a story for you. It's called Truman, and I'm going to read it to you now. All right, so this is Truman by Jean Reedy, illustrated by Lucy Ruth Cummings. Truman was small, the size of a donut, a small donut, and every bit as sweet. He lived with his Sarah, high above honking taxis and growling trash trucks and shrieking cars, and the number 11 bus which traveled south. Truman never honked or growled or shrieked at anything or anybody. He was peaceful and pensive, just like Sarah. One day, Sarah ate a big banana for her breakfast. She clipped a blue bow in her hair and buttoned up a brand new sweater. She strapped on a backpack so big, 32 small tortoises could ride along in it. But zero, tortoise, zero tortoises did. Sarah even placed seven, yes, seven green beans in Truman's dish. That's two more than usual. She kissed her finger, touched it to his shell, and whispered, be brave. Then she left. Not to worry, she'd left before, and she'd always returned. But this time, the backpack was particularly big, and Sarah looked particularly pensive. And that banana, and that bow, and let's not forget about those extra beans. That's when Truman saw something he'd never seen before. Sarah boarding the number 11 bus going south, the bus roared away. Truman waited for Sarah to return. He waited and waited. He waited like a thousand hours, tortoise hours that is, until he could no longer wait. He would go after his Sarah. He would catch the number 11 bus going south, even amid the honking and growling and the shrieking, even if it seemed Impossible. Bonk. That's when he noticed the rocks, three rocks, that had never been there. Ordinary rocks that now seemed extraordinary. And the arm of the couch and the pillow propped just right and all that tall, tall boot and the rug, that glorious, endless, rug. Without Sarah, their home seemed vast and uncharted and unsettling. Truly unsettling. But perhaps most unsettling was that Truman could no longer see the taxis or the trash trucks or the cars or the number 11 bus. And which way was south anyway? Now the sun hung low like Truman's head and heart. Just then, he sees a, a little flower, a dandelion. And then, vroom, screech, whish. Up floors and under doors, Truman heard it, a bus. And it was time to catch the number 11 bus south, amid the honking and the growling and the shrieking. Yet standing there, in that ray of light, Truman felt peaceful and pensive. Brave. But just as he was about to slip under the door, through that opening barely the size of a tortoise, Sarah! She spotted him shining like the sun. Truman, she cried. She scooped him up and said things like, Oh my goodness, and you, and how did you ever, and amazing. 
Sarah kissed her finger and touched it to his shell and tucked him safely back into his tank. He was pencil where he was pen peaceful and pensive and yes, proud of himself. And later, just before bedtime, she read him a story. Now Truman knew that one day soon, he and his Sarah might travel south to see new sights, hear new sounds, and think new thoughts together. So that was a lovely story about a girl getting ready to go to school for the first time and for her tortoise being a little bit worried. But as you can see, they were both brave, just like I know you're going to be brave when you come to your first day of kindergarten. Have a great um, afternoon or morning or evening, and I look forward to seeing you soon. This is Mr. Lee. Goodbye.